Hi, we're Tony and Chelsea Northrop, and today we're learning to use manual mode on our cameras. Manual mode can seem kind of scary, but it's actually a really useful way to learn your camera, and once you learn how to use it, you'll be using it all the time to control your camera's shutter speed and aperture. First, select manual mode. Most cameras just have a dial with a big M on it. Now that you're in manual mode, you can control your shutter speed and your aperture separately. So let's first start with controlling your shutter speed. You're gonna to want to find the dial that controls that. It's usually your main dial. The longer your shutter speed is, the more light your camera is going to let in. It's gonna brighten your pictures, but it's also gonna introduce camera shake and or motion blur from your subject. The shorter your shutter speed is, the more you're gonna freeze action, but it's also going to make your pictures darker. So let's do a little exercise now so you can practice controlling your shutter speed and see what it does to your pictures. So for now, I'm gonna have you set your aperture to the lowest number and set your ISO to auto, just so you can practice your shutter speed. So I'll start at one fifth of a second and Tony, will you nod your head and we'll see if I can capture that motion more. Ooh, you could hear that it was a little bit slow and sure enough, the picture is really blurry. So let's move it up to a 30th of a second and see what that looks like. Shake that head, Tony. Sounded a bit faster and it looks quite a bit clearer, but I think it's still just a little bit blurry. So let's bump it up to one two fiftieth of a second and see how that works for us. That sounded nice and fast and it looks a lot better too. If you don't have a willing model to shake their head or move for you, you could always turn on a faucet and try to freeze the motion of the water. Now that you've figured out how to set the shutter speed, let's set the aperture. First, set the shutter speed to 1 60th of a second, kind of a general good all around shutter speed. And we'll choose the lowest possible f-stop number. On this particular lens, it's f1.8. Now the lower the f-stop number, the more the background is going to be blurred and the more light you're going to be letting in. If you choose a higher f-stop number, the iris of the lens gets smaller and smaller. That gets more of the background in focus, but because the opening is smaller, it's letting less light in. Usually, you want to use the lowest possible f-stop number that gets your entire subject in focus. So let's try it out now by taking a couple of test shots. First, with your shutter speed set to 1 60th, your ISO set to auto, and your f-stop number set to the lowest possible number, take a picture. Notice the blur that's in the background. Your picture might not be as blurred as my picture. It kind of depends on the lens that you're using and the lowest possible f-stop number that that lens supports. Now let's change the aperture to f8 and take another picture. As you can see at f8, the background is much less blurry. Let's jump up to f16 and try it again. At f16, the background is much sharper, but you might notice another side effect. It also got noisier. That's because the camera had to automatically adjust the ISO to a faster ISO speed because it, the camera was letting in less light. And with less light, the camera does the best it can, but it ends up becoming noisy. So I'll pass it back to Chelsea to explain how ISO works. So your ISO is gonna control how much light it takes to make your picture bright. This concept sounds a little bit difficult when explained, so you should just experiment yourself and take your own pictures. But basically, if you have a low ISO, you're gonna need more light to expose your picture properly. If you have a high ISO, you can properly expose your picture in a darker environment. If you have a low f-stop number, like F18, you can also have a low ISO number, like ISO 100. If you have a really fast shutter speed, like 1 1,000th, and you're photographing birds, you'll need a higher ISO number to properly expose your picture. It sounds like a mouthful, it sounds really complicated, but just get your hands on the ISO and try it yourself and you'll see what I mean. One thing to keep in mind is that the lower ISOs are gonna make a cleaner image. If you're using a really high ISO number, you're gonna introduce a lot of noise into your pictures. The higher your ISO, the more noise. So try to always use the lowest ISO possible for your environment. So I'm gonna take my camera off of auto ISO like we had it on earlier. We're gonna set our shutter speed to 1 60th of a second and set your aperture to the lowest number that you can. For me, that's 1 8. 
and we're going to take some sample pictures at ISO 200, 800, and 3200. Now you can look back at your shots with your different ISOs and see how your shots change. Did the exposure change? Are some brighter than others? And which one is closest to the proper exposure for you? Now let's bring it all together, controlling each of the three different settings. Starting with shutter speed, you'll always want to use the slowest shutter speed you can to freeze the motion of your subject and any camera shake. With the aperture, you want to choose the lowest f-stop number possible that gives you the depth of field you need. Basically, the lowest f-stop number that has your entire subject in focus. Then, you'll vary the ISO up or down to properly expose your picture, checking your histogram to make sure that neither the left side nor the right side is clipped more than absolutely necessary. Now for practice. So pick your subject and decide which shutter speed you need. If it's just a still person, you can probably get away with about 1 60th of a second. If the person's moving, probably 1 2 50th of a second. I'm gonna choose 1 60th of a second because Tony's still and he's just standing here. Next, choose your f-stop number, the lowest one possible. Now, take your shot. Next, review your shot. If there's camera shake or motion blur, double your shutter speed. For example, go from 1 60th to 1 1 25th of a second. If part of your subject is out of focus, double your f-stop number. For example, go from f4 to f8. Once you've made those adjustments, Make sure that you also adjust your ISO so that your picture is properly exposed. It all sounds complex, but with practice, your hands will begin to understand how it all works and you'll be able to make adjustments quickly. You'll also begin to develop a sense for the right shutter speed, f-stop number, and ISO that you need for different environments. So that wasn't so bad. I think we took a lot of the mystery out of shooting in manual. It just takes some practice. It's definitely not as hard as it sounds. And if you liked this video and you felt like we taught you a lot, you should check out our book, Stunning Digital Photography, especially chapter four, where we go more in depth into these same subjects. Thank you. Thank you.